Hi all, right, welcome back to Animax and Kharkov, Soviet Solo. Um, actually no, this is going to be um, take two part 40, it's still the second bit isn't it? I'm not quite finished yet, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I never got back last night, uh, I copied the part across, but hopefully we can finish this. We started on the impulse, kind of glad I did, I didn't carry on Max, just wanted to br brush up on the rules part with this is one bit that kind of caught me before, unit, unit stack, unit stack and all that, other active units. Um, I think I've got it, I mean reading through the rules there and also the example that they have, although there's a couple of bits in the example, uh, I'm not sure are 100% correct but I'll, I'll not bother going into that. Um, yeah, because I'm not going to go into the example. But anyway, it just it feels quite clear to me. So, <laughs> yeah, here's hoping. Uh, a couple of things to talk about, though, as usual. Um, right, um, well, Martin pointed out, as I noticed myself, uh, now I've not, I've not spoke about this, but since finding out... Right, hold on. Right, first of all, let, let's talk about, right, he, he's, he's noted a small clarification, uh, and admittedly, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see this myself. Um, and it's when we were, when we had foolishly put um, this unit into here, I think, and it wasn't in Dangerous Round, and it was, um, I spoke about the, you know, things have, things moved there, because we've had that attack, yeah, I think they have a bit, haven't they? Anyway, I spoke about moving the 6th Army unit, like, one, two, three, four. it was, into it, there. Uh, that's the boundary, it's, that can't, that 6th Army unit can't pass that red line. Uh, that's just for Vornish front units. Um, so, uh, I spoke wrongly there, but he did say that um, the 40th mechanised unit underneath could have made the move. So that would have went one two, three, four, five into there. Um, so it would have been fine, but yeah, well spotted, Martin. I, I just, sometimes you look at these, I've done it already in this game, haven't I? A couple of times looking at proximity or dangerous round and crossing the boundary, yeah, so. Uh, but fortunately, it was still able to do it with the 40th army, so we kind of got away with that one. Uh, right, and then the other one he, he, we talked, we were, he was talking about was, um, yeah, just this whole thing regarding action step eight. Yeah. And then, where are we, where are we? Action step eight, on terms five to seven action steps, action step eight. And in particular, what we're interested in here is the preference uh, B, which is empty or garrison position hex. And then, uh, yeah, so, First of all, Martin said, uh, and this is quite good, how he's uh, come across with this one. Yeah, he says, it's worth noting that similar wording, because it was a wording, you know, and I was, I'm, I'm now convinced, well, I'm, I'm not only convinced, I've also asked a question of BGG and John Butterfield's answered the question, which also confirms everything. Um, but I, I'm convinced the way he spoke about this, because... Like I say, he says, it's all. It's worth noting that similar wording is used in many places. Empty or garrison VP hex. And then empty or garrison town or city. So what that means is empty VP hex or garrison VP hex. Empty town or city or garrison town or city. And the one we're checking for, empty or garrison position hex, does indeed mean empty position hex or garrison position hex. So there you go, and um, yeah, that when I seen that, I thought right, that that clears it up for me. Um, if there was any um, clearing up needed, <laughs> well, there is with me. It's it's nice to be able to like say ah okay yeah you know. So um yeah let's get uh, but what I wanted to do and ask Martin and he he actually made a comment. Well, it's it's there for you to read. Uh, I can't remember. I can't find exactly where that was. Um, but it was, funnily enough, something he had brought up when playtesting had asked about 
empty hexes, position hexes. It was it was something along these lines, and uh, I says, "Oh, that's interesting. I'd be interested to know what the fe- uh, if there was any feedback." But he says uh, he does doesn't recall getting any feedback. But there must have been lots of questions going back and forward, and John was obviously answering lots of them, and uh, uh, so nothing from that. So so I said to Martin, I says, "Well, you know what? I'd like to ask a question." And the reason I'm asking the question still is, I mean, if I'm clear on why, um, if I'm clear on the word done, and I now know that these have got to end in position the hexes, if if they can, uh, why do I need to ask a question? And I guess it was because it seems strange to me that these units are ending here and not ending here, you know? One hex closer to where they're heading, why would they stop back here? Um... And uh, so I thought, yeah, I'm going to ask that question. And uh, John Butterfield seems to be around pretty regularly just now. And he's picking up all the questions that are coming out, which is great. It's always always great to hear from the actual man that designed it. <laughs> um, oh, I need to refresh that. Hang on. I'm just trying to find the question so I can... Uh, how it is awarded it. Um, okay. Uh so, uh, oh, damn it, hang on, sorry, give me a sec, yeah, so, that's a bit of a big question, do I really need to read it out, well, right, it's uh, titled SS German Action Step 8, Soviet Soul German Action Step 8, right, hi all, in turns 5 to 7, Action Step 8 has a preference, empty your garrison position hex, yeah. right, I won't go through it all, I, I, I know, I basically start by saying I now understand what the wording is that that I've I I misunderstood it at first, um. But I'm basically saying that this is this is turn five, and I'm seeing the Germans making moves, but because they've got to end in position hexes, they're not basically pushing forward, and I I, I thought well, is there a reason for that? I mean, I figured there has to be a reason. I I said a final. My, I end my question where I'm sure there must be a good reason for this, so maybe maybe someone could enlighten me. Um, and uh, John Butterfield has replied and said, The thinking behind preference B in step 8 is that at this stage in the game, the, German, the Germans are cautiously aggressive, seeking opportunities to engage Soviet units while also screening against further Soviet advances. And I think that's that's perfect. I mean, I never kind of thought about. If, I mean, if you think about, it, we are we're just moved into turn five. We were on the aggressive side of things. Now the Germans are moving onto that side of things. We're stepping back a little bit, but the Germans aren't quite full on yet. <laughs> They've got more to come, you know. So and that's why they must. And I, I guess I just couldn't. Why would it be position hexes? And it must be that it works out that that does generally make it more cautious in the movement you know if this unit's going to end here it'll say right no let's let's go back here it'll just it will go only go so far you know it won't just pile in there admittedly if it can reach adjacent then it'll do that so there's that bit of it but i think it's a good explanation this game back there um makes sense and i'm sure if we look at action steps from turn eight onwards which i probably should have had a look at then we will see things less restrictive. Um, yeah, they, they look slightly different, just glancing at them there, but um, um, we'll, we'll obviously get to that. But I don't think, I can't see the wording of action step eight within five, to, action steps five to seven, uh, sorry, turns five to seven. I can't see the wording in anywhere in action steps from turn eight onwards. Okay, so all good with that. Uh, and one little, it got me thinking again that when I moved these second SS units, well, it got me thinking two things. Well, yeah, that's, there's, there's similar things. First of all, I thought, hmm, where did this unit actually finish? Because he didn't get adjacent. And look, he's not in a position hex. And I thought, I, I've had a look at it, and I know we couldn't get him here because he was in dangerous round. Um... However, I figured he should have been in there. And um, while I was saying that to Mark and, um, to Martin in another post, he's, he's actually said, I think it should move to position 97. Um, 
So he says, so check all eligible position hexes after you've concluded that it can't move adjacent. You, you place in a non-position hex only if there aren't any eligible position hexes. Well, also, Martin, I, I, I started thinking about, you're saying if it can't move adjacent, are we not right in thinking that, and this is what got me thinking, oh, right, is there any other, could there be any other trouble here to where I've moved these units? Because these units moved into non-position hexes adjacent. Now, if this had been a position hex, then my belief would be that preference A is adjacent to a Soviet unit and preference B is a position hex. So so it's not it's not always when the unit uh, doesn't move adjacent, even if it moves adjacent, it still wants to tr prioritise um, a position hex. Uh, and even, this, and I thought this was quite interesting because I was watching, um, that's when I was deploying, oh, what unit was it then? Uh, was it the one from the town? No, it couldn't have been the one from the town. It must have been the second. It must have been this guy, and his three his possible positions were here. No. Here. Here and here. No, I think there was one, two, three, four, five. He had five possibilities, but this was his last possibility, and it, and the reason that and the reason this wasn't a possibility for him, right? And because I looked at this and I thought, well, hang on, that's a position hex. But the reason this wasn't a possibility when I when I'd looked at it, it's it, it's not three away, it's four away from that unit. Bear in mind it's this unit we're moving from wherever they moved, right? So we're trying to find a hex within three adjacent to these units, right? I better watch. It was there, wasn't it? Right. But I concluded that it was either one. Uh, no. No, no, sorry. Where am I? I'm going too far up, am I? It's either, sorry, here. Yeah, we're looking at, this This guy wasn't here. We're looking at here. So it was either here, here, or here. Within, it was a, within three of that. But if you look at the preferences, the within three comes after, within three hexes of the unit in the same core is preference C. Preference B is empty empty position or an empty position hex or a garrison position hex so in actual fact i mean i got away with that because we we then found out and martin's never mentioned this because yeah this wasn't a, a, an eligible hex to go to because it was in dangerous surround and that's why we had to move that unit back but initially i should have been considering that hex within preference b before i considered the other hexes within preference C, which was in three, three of the unit, three of the core. So yeah, gonna have to watch out. But now, now I know, I know how it works. Um, I understand that the word, and I, I just totally did not read the word in, in the way that it's meant to be read. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've, I've had my moments with that throughout this game and, and our den. Um, it just it, it might just be me sometimes but then again sometimes I think it does bring to light that something is worded in a way that could do with some clarity you know like um, just yeah anyway uh, okay so yeah and then I thought about these other units I thought well could they not have had a position hex but if you see there's no position hexes round about there but like I just said to you if this had been a position hex they might well been into that the, you've got to check other restrictions than that obviously this would have a restriction would have said right it's in dangerous round can't go there so it, it ends up going there but i never ever considered this hex for that unit so uh yeah so need to watch that one um mm -hmm. don't need to look at all the possibilities then look at all the possibilities adjacent then look at then prioritize position hexes adjacent then look at units that are within three of the core so anyway okay right <laughs> we better get on with this part or this is going to be well it was only an hour and five minutes so i should be able to get this sorted out but it depends what happens here to be honest right so let's get back to this german impulse then yeah and like i say i'm kind of glad i was able to step away and i just just had a wee look at the rules just just to now before i 
started recording again just to refresh things. So, but we we had done this proper way. Um, forward attack. The only the only thing that I didn't consider, uh, and I had to have a wee glance, was that uh, one of these checks. Well, in fact, uh, yeah, one of these checks was for. I need to go out a little bit. One of these checks was against this stack here, which has got four strength, but an IP. And um, yeah, so that gives it a plus one situationally. However, it would it would not give the plus one if they happen to have engineers as a combat tactic there. So you need to keep that one in mind. And uh, if that had engineers there, that would have triggered, that would have then stayed at, it would have dropped to, um, what is it, four, and then minus one for the car, so it would have dropped to three. And we're looking at three times, and we've got nine, so if that had combat engineers on the tactic, uh, sorry, engineers, um, it would have, um, that would have been a goal, right? So we've done all the checks that this, uh, we're, we're looking at this as the lead unit, because it's the lowest selector number, and the stack that it's with, and we checked, um, we checked these guys, and we checked, I don't know, zoom out a little bit more eh, from a distance at the moment. And we checked this guy, um, which would mean coming across, oh, I'm saying coming across the river, hang on Grant, that's a bridge. Yeah. Uh, now does that matter? One, two, three, four, five, uh, and that's the only hex that we did decide they could get in it, because these were too restrictive from crossing the river. But that is, um, that's over the bridge. Uh, does it matter? Right, hang on. All German units across Donitz River hex side, hex sides. Uh, right, give me a sec. I'm not sure about this. <laughs> um, I can't. Yeah, I can't find any. I feel like this is a a kind of dumb question. After I, part of me feels like in Arden, though, you weren't penalised for attacking across a bridge river hexade. I mean, this is a bridge river hex side. It talks about a, a Donitz river hex side. So, I mean, you know, I understand this is a Donitz river hex side. You know, if I was coming across here and, and there, or if I, if I was attacking across there, attacking across there, but I'm attacking across the bridge. Ugh. I feel like I shouldn't be needing to ponder on this, but I've looked through the rules and I can't... I'm not seeing anything. Okay, give me a sec. Uh, okay, well, uh, yeah, it was tricky to kind of find something out. So I, I was actually delving into enemy action or then to look and... Uh, I don't know why I was just having a a moment with us about whether the attack should be considered restricted or not. Uh, but within our, uh, any match in our den, it didn't matter. Your attacks were halved if you were attacking across the river or if you were attacking across the bridge, the river, Hexside as well. The fact I can't find in in here, um, I'm going to assume that when it says all German units across Donitz River, Hexides, uh to check for that situational strength then um then that is gonna that is gonna apply even if it is a bridge yeah so okay uh that's fine please let me know if i for some reason do have that wrong but i can't find anything to see it otherwise uh so i'm pretty sure it's, that's right and i'm just having a a daft grantos moment again i think uh okay so yeah, so we've done the check there, we've done the check there, obviously there was not a check, well, we've checked to see. Um, if we could have reached this guy, then yeah, fair enough, we might have uh, had a look, but um, yeah, that was that. So that was us finished with selector number three, so I think we were just about to move on to the next one, and then that's when I, things, uh, well, I just left it for the night. 
Right, uh, so this is elector number four, and then he's also got number 10 with him. So again, he's a unit stack, so we now he now becomes the lead unit to do to do checks as well. Um, he's got infantry underneath him. And by the way, although these act as a stack um, when doing these checks, if they eventually start moving, you do move them one at a time, and they do maybe end up in different places, obviously. You can see this has got six movement, the infantry underneath only got four, so, um, yeah, we need to, <laughs> well, that's true, actually, um, because we're checking the stat, we can only check things that are four movement points away then, can't we? Yeah, and I think I may have wondered with that one too, although we were able, because I think there's infantry in there as well, isn't there? So one, two, three, well, we were, yeah, maybe not. Well, yeah, that's interesting because it'd be one, two, three for the infantry and it'd be one, two, three, four, five for the... So they, they all could still end up there. Um, one, two... Yeah, I mean, the infantry couldn't... Just, yeah... I'm assuming we've got to consider that they've got to all get to the to the target that they're checking, eh? Yeah. Because when I went to consider I mean, okay, those two checks weren't, but when I looked here I went one, two, three, four, five, six, and I said, Oh, he's he's only one away. But that doesn't bring the whole stack with it, because there's infantry in there and that wouldn't have reached. So we would only have been able to count the strength that of the the mechanized units that that were there which i think there's maybe two and i think yeah it's infantry un underneath so we would actually only be able to consider seven strength there um if we were able to make that anyway okay right well we'll need to keep that that in mind too obviously <laughs> so we're checking here but i don't think mean this has got a strength of five this had a strength of nine so we're there's no point checking here um, he's not got anybody else round about that's, you know, over the other side of where this guy was because he had nine strength. He was he was a better option, really. So, nothing to check with him. So then we move on to next selector number and ascend an order. And this is number five. He's only got three strength. Now, he is on his own and will be able to reach here. One, two, three, four, five. So he can actually reach this guy. But as you can see, it's going to be three against three. Situationally, it would be three against two, I think, because the uh, the card. Um, yeah, it would be three against two. But however, three against two is not three times. Um, you know that would need we would need to have a, had a strength of eight. Uh, sorry, six. We would need to have a strength of six against two to make it work. So. So he doesn't work, and then obviously you can see what's going to happen here. This guy's not going to work. It's not, again, there's nobody else to go for. And then same with this guy who's less strength as well. So we cannot get a forward attack going. Um, and that's that card done. Now, however, attack is less restrictive. It only wants two times, but... Oh yeah, it's still unit stack. So... We're now look at this action card, because uh, that's how, where are we in step three or something? So this is step four, actually, of the action steps. So we're now looking for situational strength of active unit stack greater than or equal to two times proximate Soviet unit stack. So now we go back to the beginning. Well, if any of the units, had, any of these active units had carried out an action, then we wouldn't be considering them anymore. I would have had them tilted. 45 degrees and um, yeah and they would have uh, not been uh, considered for this uh, checking procedure okay so and then it's an ascending order again so we're looking at this guy again so like I say he's got nine now what was what was our better option they were both the same weren't they so this is a f nine against four it's got a plus one and a minus one to it plus one for the IP Minus one for the four command card. Um, so that's actually nine against four. 
So we do have two times on that stack. We do also, however, have the same on this, don't we? Because this, this had... Oh no, uh, yeah, no, that's four. So that was nine against four, and that's nine against four as well, isn't it? Because there was a, a plus one because we were attacking across the river, and a minus one because of the card. So that's nine against four, that's nine against four. Both of them are two to one. Now, what would we prefer then? Um, well, this is where we need to then move on. <laughs> So we've achieved this situation this time, and we've got two possible targets. Um, yeah, I just want to... The fact this guy... No, we can't reach him anyway. Yeah, we couldn't reach him. That's fine. Because um, I can only assume that I would have to go on how I said that if we could reach that with some units, we would obviously only be able to contain their strength within the check, you know, the ones that could reach. I mean, clearly, I think that kind of makes sense, common sense, doesn't it? Uh, okay, so there are there are two possible targets. And remember, this hex here has three units, I think. This is nine as well. So this is nine with a plus one and a minus one. Again, it's got an IP command. Yeah, so nine strength, plus one for the... IP minus one for the card. So that's nine against nine. So, you know, so it's not going to consider that. Needs two times. So we've got two options. So now let's, let's look at the card a bit more now. So now we can move on and look at the action. And the action says all active units, right? And that's all active units. Not just considering this lead unit and its stack now. We're considering all the other active units. So all active units proximate to the qualifying target move adjacent to the target and attack. Now it says prefer target, so there's a preference here, and as we know we've got two possible targets. So prefer the target A that's the weakest, and then B and a VP hex. So um Um, right, hang on though. Right, give me a sec. Weakest. Weakest is the unit stack with the lowest total situational strength. Right, yeah, because I thought we were going to find this out by seeing what strength we could bring, because we might, I think we can bring more of an army against this, you know, more of a force against this than what we can against this because of the distance, you know. But that's not how we're checking to see which unit we're attacking here, is it? The weakest. Um, and that's the priority. But they've both got the same situational strength, so how do I... How do I break that one down? Right, hang on. Aha! Well, we break it down by looking in the rule book. Because <laughs> uh, the Poirier just, again, just a condensed sort of version of it tells you that it's units that with lowest total situational strength. Page 22 of the rule book, in the description of weakest, so right at the very top there, is the unit or stat with the lowest, with the lower total situational combat strength, okay, and then if tied, the unit or stack in the lower numbered position, then higher unit selector number. So if tied, the unit or stack in the lower numbered position, I'm guessing it's going to be the VP hex then. So that number, that's number 11, and this is number 85. Yeah, okay. So it's going to prioritise going for the VPX, which, yeah, coincidentally, or, well, not coincidentally, is the, is the next preference that we'd want to prefer VPX to... Um, yeah. Well, yeah, why is it giving you a second preference? I suppose if they, if, they all, if they both came back the same when checking weakest? Or... Ooh, hang on, hang on then, Grant. Maybe I shouldn't be looking at that if tied. Yeah, I think so. Well, you know what? It's going gonna, it's gonna to still end up with the same target. But... You know... Well, 
please tell me if you know if I'm if I'm preferring a target that's weakest and both of these are the same situational strength do I then move on to preference B and decide it's the VP hex or do I look at weakest as I am just now in the rule book and finding out that if tied the unit or stack in the lower number position would be considered to take priority then if they if they were tied there, well they well they could be tied if they were both in that not position hex, then, then they would select the higher unit selector number. But I'm, I mean I know it comes to the same result and it comes to the same target, but I'm just wondering if because what's on this card can sometimes be you know generally there's some you know they'll say that the card can override certain things and it's just the fact it's got the two preferences weakest and then VP hex yeah yeah please make a comment if you if you think that it should be what's written on the card or we should check what is it the, the, the tied options within weakest in the rule book there um, but it does it does come down to the, the same target okay good oh, this is going on too long isn't it it's going to be an awful long episode. What can I do? Well, yeah, well, I'll just keep moving, Grant, I suppose. We, we, we might, I don't think all the units are going to get down there, though, so we're going to, we're still going to have stuff to do here, and it's taking a bit too long. And the other part was an hour and five minutes long, so... Yeah, I might need to, I might need to split some stuff up. Okay, well... Yeah, because the first first time we're doing all this as well, because we are going to make an attack. So all active units proximate to this target. This is our target. So um, all active units proximate to it. Move adjacent to the target and attack, right? And then there's a wee section after that that tells us how we will break off, what we will do once we start drawing combat chips. Um, okay, let me... Now this is where we again move we look at ten point five four. So when an action calls for German units to move adjacent to a Soviet unit, move the units one at a time, first the lead unit, then an ascending numerical order. Ah, I'm glad I read this, because I think I made a mistake with this before. There was quite a few bits in this that caught me out. So we're moving these individually, right? Uh now I think that IP is going to drop off. Well, you know what? It's got the counter underneath, so We'll move that out of the way first. This is the lead unit. So he's he's the first one to consider here. Move in adjacent to this unit, right? So, and then there's preferences. He, he, needs, he wants to move adjacent, right? Uh, he wants to surround the unit, not possible. Um, actually, do we not know that he can only move to this one hex? <laughs> when I think about it, I don't, I don't think he's got a choice, is he? Um, there's some preferences, but hang on. Wait, right, that's one, two, three, and then four, five. That is the best hex that he can reach. And in fact, you know what? I get the feeling it's just the stack that's going to move into here and attack, isn't it? These other guys are not going to get in. Ah, oh, hold on, Grant. That's wrong. That's wrong. Because we're doing it in ascending order. Okay. This guy moves one, two, three, four, five. Is adjacent. The next unit we check is not this. This is number six and this is number nine. We then go up to check number four. Hopefully this is right, Martin. Hopefully I've got this right. So um, I, I don't think it's going to matter because I don't think I can get down. So one, two, three four, five, six. Yeah, that's as far as he can go. Um, the next unit's ten underneath. But we would then look at number five. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, can't make it. There's no other... Yeah, they can't, they can't come down and in here. Yeah, so that was, that was then number five looked up. So now we're looking at number six. So, yeah, he can make it. One, two, three, four, five. I'll just put him underneath. 
Uh, and then, what unit was that? Six? Forgot already. Six. Yeah. So who's next? Um, now remember, although I've checked this guy, we, but I mean, yeah, he's, he's not making it. So six. So next one is, well, next one is actually ten. And we've got two tens. Um, he's from third core. He's from 40 core. So we would check this guy first. He can't make it down there. I'm just going to put him back underneath to keep the numbers right. Um, and he, uh, this 40 core guy is an infantry unit. Can't make it down. Uh, sorry, I should have been checking nine first, shouldn't I? So this, this is, yeah, he can make it. One, two. It's not, it's not one, two. One. See, because even, yeah. One, two. And it's, it's three for him to cross there. So, I mean, he would prefer to get in here if he could. But he can't. The only hex he can go is in here as well. Right. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to leave that, um, I'm just going to leave that IP there, and that's where the units were, because we need to just check this, and um, any of these moves, um, yeah, 10.51 here on the same page as I'm on, page 22, restrictions may override the situation. The German movement restrictions of 10.11 apply to all action card actions unless specifically accept, accepted so we've got you know yeah this isn't going to happen is it because <laughs> they're now going to be in dangerous around aren't they yeah after all that okay I, i'm i suppose i'm going through the procedure showing you how it's done so then we would have been looking at number 10 uh the third core one first then the 40th core one they can't reach um and 15 uh, this guy can't reach either, he's too far away. So, although it happened that it was, I mean, to be honest, we would have had a better force on this guy, but it still wants to go down to this guy. However, if we are restricted now and we've got to go back, which I think we are, because, um, yeah, we're in dangerous round, aren't we? Uh, and it says there are German movement restrictions to 10.11 apply to all action card actions unless specifically it's accepted um, and then it also says an active German unit that meets the criteria of an action card situation like what we've done here may still be unable to perform the action or may be limited in its movement when performing the action due to these restrictions so and then the restrictions are I mean between turn four and seven, that's what we are. If not in danger of surround, we were not in danger of surround. No. Then, um, if not in dangerous surround, don't end move in dangerous surround. Unless move ends in a VP hex, or a hex outside Soviet support, or causes surround of Soviet unit, or allowed by the action. So none of the things have applied, have they? And it's clearly surroundable. We move this guy in here and he, he's, they're all surrounded. Uh, it's in the Soviet support zone. Yeah, so that is not happening, Grant. Um, okay, I might be wondering what to do now. Um, can we consider going for the other guy with us, check? Um, I feel like we should be able to, but hang on. Okay, I, I, this is definitely going to take far too long. The other epi the other part, uh, half of this is an hour and five minutes long. So I'm going to just start uploading that now, because uh, I've actually watched it back as well. And um, I'll just put a note in the header saying that unfortunately things got a bit long, so we end up... I wish I hadn't started this German impulse, but we hadn't really started that. And, and I think when you watch this part back from the, from the beginning, it's really just starting this afresh again anyway. So, um, right, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I'm pretty sure we can consider this other unit because the wording on the card is, all active units proximate to qualifying target. So we had two targets to look at, 
we've now found out that that target didn't qualify. Um, hmm, yeah. So, you know, can we now consider the other target? I would say yes. I don't want to get all this wrong, though. I really don't. Um, I felt comfortable with this, and now I'm... Oh, I'm bungling my way through it a bit. Um, yeah, this this is a bit tricky because as soon as I move this unit, let's just say, right, that this turns out well no. It would proof it it would pick another hex, wouldn't it? It would. Yeah, let's let's just go through the procedure then. Let's take I mean right. There's no there's no rush anymore, Grant. Let's get it done properly. So we had two targets, that one and this one. We wanted to go for this one. We found it that we found out that it then didn't qualify or was it was restricting us from going for it. So we look at the other target. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, so we now, again, in ascending order, try and carry out the action. So all active units proximate to qualifying target, move adjacent to target and attack. Prefer target that was weakest. Okay, we looked at that. It didn't qualify. So we're, you know, that one was restricting us. This one's not, right? Well, we don't know if it is yet. <laughs> I don't think so, because I'm um, pretty sure, I mean, if I was to move like one, two, three, four, five in here um, then I could possibly see this being a dangerous round and that's what my thinking was I suppose if I, if I let's just say that move, unit moves there first, he's, he's the lead unit, he's the first one to move and it turns out he wants to be in this hex attacking this unit here um, my guess is that I've got to check that right away and that's what I should have been doing down here as soon as that first lead unit moved to there, I should have then checked the restriction, found out he was in dangerous round, and said, right, he can't he can't do that. And then check the next one. But I mean I found out they were all in that position. Here's another thing that comes to mind though. I remember in our den, you could start off having yeah, I remember this one. You could start off having the situation satisfied, as in greater than or equal to two times proximate strength. Then, when you actually move the units, end up with less than that because of certain restrictions. Yeah, I remember that happening. Um, okay, yeah, I, I guess what I'm saying is that now if this unit was... I mean, because if I move that to there, this guy can go out and in. Or... Yeah, we could just move this one, two, and then this guy can come in here and surround that guy. So, do I sort of stop there? Well, you know what? I, I, I'm moving adjacent to another unit. I could look at another possible hex and say, well, is that all right? And it might not be, and it might be. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to have to get this one get this one out there and find out, make sure we're doing things properly here. Okay, so we're trying to move adjacent to that unit. So we're looking at 10.54 again. Um, and it does say all such moves are subject to the German movement restrictions 10.11. So, okay. Uh, so, yeah. We're preferring a hex that would cause the Soviet unit to become surrounded. No. And we're just looking at unit selector number three here. He's the lead unit. Um, B. A hex not uh, a hex not adjacent to a German unit adjacent to the same Soviet unit. No. An empty hex. Okay. Well, he's got a few possibilities. Right. And in fact, what are these possibilities? Okay. So that's his three possible hexes that he can reach adjacent to our target and they're all empty 
I think it's occupied solely by German units, not attacking this action. And then E, most movement points to reach. Okay. So this actually might come down to it that because he, he can't do that because of the restriction. Because my guess is one, two, three, four. That's five movement. Whereas one, two, three, and then we've got one, two, three. So these are both three. So he actually wants to prefer there. Okay. However, if he moves there, well, we've already seen that he would be breaking a restriction. He would be in danger of surround. So he can't move there. So can he move to one of the other ones? Well, these are both three away. Um, so that then means we can't break that down any further. The empty hexes, not adjacent to Germany, blah, blah, blah. Um, they're both the same amount of movement points. So I would say we've then got to break that by the tiebreaker. Well, hang on, let's just see if any of the two might be and dangerous around though. So the tiebreaker would be what is that again? Uh, hex that enables an R German unit to trace supply. We don't need that. So then lowest numbered hex. So it would be this one. Two zero zero six. So that's where he would rather be. Um I'm just trying to show me these cubes about there stretching across there for them. Um, okay, so, yeah, he's going to be a dangerous around in there as well, though, isn't he? He goes in here, this guy won't, just goes out and on, and he's surrounded. So, again, and this is in the Soviet support zone, so he's not going to go in there. So, his final choice is going to be here. Um, and that, actually, I thought it was going to be at first, but I'm forgetting, it's only this one unit that's moving, isn't it? So, um, I think he's got an out hex, or, or has he? Right, where, where can we move to there? So, we could move in here. Um, yeah, and we can move one, two, three, four. That's a garrison, that's going to stop us. That garrison's here, by the way. We're not deploying reserves. <laughs> right, so one, two, breaking's going to control. Yeah, three, that's... Well, actually, that might save them then. That garrison might stop it, because I actually thought I was getting in there. So I think he, he does have an out hex there, doesn't he? And we've got zone of control here, and here, and here, but not there. And that's because of that garrison. Well, I'm glad that garrison's doing something then. <laughs> because uh, that was the one that we shouldn't have placed. Um, okay, so that does look a legitimate hex for him to go to then, doesn't that? Uh, so this unit's going to move one, two, three into there. Two, one, zero, seven. He's not breaking any other restrictions. Um, don't cause Soviet proximity to empty or garrison German VP hex. Don't cause any German unit in the hex in Soviet support to be put in dangerous round unless that unit is active and not yet acted. The big one is though, if not in dangerous round, don't end move in dangerous round unless move ends in VP hex or hex outside Soviet support or causes surround of Soviet unit or allowed by action. Uh, and then the last one, well, second last one, don't cause surrounded Soviet unit to be surrounded, to be unsurrounded. Don't end that unit move in Marsh Hex unless only choice. Okay. Right, I think we've got something happening here. Um, so, right, who's next then? So that was unit selector number three, and he was part of the stack, but this is, I'm pretty sure this is right. We don't, because I think I was making a mistake of that before. We do them in selector, number, order, whatever order it is on the card, and it's in ascending order. So that was unit three. So the next one's going to be unit four. So he wants to come down and attack as well. So where where can he go? Okay, so there, there's his possible options. Um, the same hexes, isn't it? However, because we've now got this unit here, that might change 
the eligibility of these two hexes. That's a big work grant. Um, so, uh, but going again, 10.54 preferences, a hex that would cause the Soviet unit to become surrounded. And none of the hexes will do that. So, no. A hex not adjacent to a German unit adjacent to the same Soviet unit. Well, ooh. Right, I was going to say, well, that means these two are... are these two are both adjacent to the same Ger to a German unit adjacent to the same Soviet unit. But does that mean that we target the hex? Surely it would prefer an empty hex. Um Prefer A? A hex that would cause the Soviet unit to come surrounded. B, a hex not adjacent to a German unit, adjacent to the same Soviet unit. And then C, an empty hex. B. That feels a bit weird. Because, oh, I've just said that, haven't I? This is adjacent to this unit, which is adjacent to the same Soviet unit. And so is this. So that means that the only other possible hex he's got to go for is that one. And I kind of thought they would prioritise. I mean, it just say adjacent. Yeah. I'm going to go and ask this question because that feels... A hex not... Adjacent to a German unit, adjacent to the same Soviet uh, Soviet unit. Okay, I've I've went and posted this question about that, so I feel like it's it's a bit daft. I feel like I'm asking something that's that's there on the rules, you know. It just I, again, I suppose it just feels a lot odd that it would pick. Um, the hex with a German unit and not one of the empty ones. I mean, empty comes next in the preferences, but we're not getting to that because this hex is not adjacent to a German unit adjacent to the same Soviet unit. I mean, it, it, it's, I mean, it is adjacent to the same Soviet unit, but it's not adjacent to the hex. So, you know... But, I mean, surely that would have been picked up and thought about while they were looking over the game. I mean, so that's what makes me think. I mean, it's written there. It's a bit of a daft question, really, I'm asking. Um, so, well, I've went and done it now. <laughs> you know what? I've been looking, I'm looking, I'm looking a bit foolish recently anyway, so I'll, not, I'll just add to that a little bit. Okay, so, well, going by what it says, this was Unit 4. He's going to go one, two, three, four, and join this guy. Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of thought they would want to prioritise spreading out a bit, but... Okay. Um, well, we're going to get the same situation with the next one as well, aren't we? So, unit five is next, and he's here. Now, hang on, though. He might be able to stretch his legs a bit. Huh? Let me see. Okay, so yeah, he's bringing a new hex in there, uh, just by being a wee bit closer to the action. You can go one, two, three, four, five, and get in here around the back a little bit. However, that is a dangerous round, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid it is. Yeah. I think uh, some of the action cards further on, the attacks and that will probably... Possibly not care about dangerous round. Uh, well, yeah, in fact, it, these restrictions for dangerous round are only between turn four and seven. So once it gets to turn eight, that's that's removed that instruction uh, restriction. Sorry. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
So, well, he's not going to move around there because that is clearly going to be in dangerous around. So again, he's got these three options too. And going by what I've just said, well, he's going to lose his IP. It's the exact same hexes. And uh, he's going to move in here too. Something does feel odd. But then the next units that move, they're now this hex is fully stacked. So I'll just pile them in their order there again. So that was unit six, wasn't it? Um, right, so, oh, hang on. No, was that five? Yeah, because six is there. Right, okay. Yeah, that was five. So six is back on the the stack that we started, that we done the check initially. So what options has he got then? Probably the same. Well, he obviously doesn't have this option now, does he? So again, that's adjacent. One, two, three, four, five. That's adjacent. That's going to be that though, isn't it? You can't like... No. So that's his two choices. So this time he has no option but to... Uh, what we're looking at? A hex that would cause Soviet unit to become surrounded. Well, no. A hex not adjacent to a German unit or adjacent to the same Soviet unit. Well, now we don't have a choice. Um, both of these are adjacent to a German unit, adjacent to the same Soviet unit. So we just move on by that one. A hex, uh, no, hang on. An empty hex, well, they're both empty. Hex occupied by so solely by German unit. It's not most movement points to reach. So that does mean he's, he's going to come around to this one, eh? Um, and I think we decided this wasn't in dangerous round now. Wasn't it? Yeah, because of the garrison. Uh, that wasn't... Yeah, it was in danger of sound before, but that's before we moved a unit into there. That's right, we were looking at that first. If that was the first unit and there was nothing in here, then yeah, you could go out and in and this guy could come in here. But not now. So unit six is going to go one, two, three, four, five, and there. Right, and he's fine, yeah, because he's not surroundable. We can't get a unit in there, and so he's got an out hex here, yeah, okay. So then, who's next? Nine. So, this is the infantry now, the infantry one, two, three, four. So, the infantry can't reach there, so in fact, the infantry's only got one choice, and that's there, isn't it? Uh, now, is there any danger around there? One, two, three. Um, I'll leave the IP just a sec. Yeah, I think that is in danger, though, isn't it? That is, isn't it? Because out and in. One, two, three. So, okay, so he's not doing that. Um, well, he's not going to go then, is he? Because he can't reach around there. Um... Yeah, he's not going to go. Okay. So, uh, next unit is 10. Well, we've got two 10s, and again, this is third core. Um, well, he's not going to go either, is he? Because, again, one, two, three, four. And then he's... Oh, no, no. Wow, that unit's there. He's not in dangerous round. There you go. So, he was next to move, but if I move him into here, I then open up a gap there that... Well, hang on, there's a garrison there, Grant. He goes there, one, two, three. Yeah, I'm not going near the garrison. So that is surroundable. Unit 10 though, however. I'll just uh, put my marker there, just in case. Can go one, uh, one. yeah, he can't, can't get down here. So he's only got the one hex option, one, two, three, four. But if he goes down here, he's not in dangerous round, is he? Because this unit's still here. Yeah, now he's also exposed this town, so I think there's stuff across here. Remember, the third tank can't go across there, um, or the 40th Army, so it's, it's only the 6th Army unit, which is infantry, and can't reach. Um, yeah. 
No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't reaching anyway. So, so yeah, but that would break a restriction by leaving that. Uh, don't cause Soviet proximity. Empty gas in German DP hex. So, but it's okay. He's okay, and he's not in dangerous around. Okay, so that was unit ten. So I think that's good. And then this is the other unit ten. So he can go. Uh, one two. Yeah, you can go in here. Or here, right? Yeah. So he's got a couple of options. Um, is it going to come down to movement points? I think the movement might be the same this time. Eh? It's not adjacent to German unit, adjacent to, yeah. An empty hex, well, no. We can't do either of them. Oh, a hex that would cause Soviet unit become surrounded, well, no. It's just between the two hexes, Grant. Uh, so, most movement points. So, uh, one, two, three, and that's one, two, three. So, they're both the same. So we go to tiebreakers and it's going to be the lowest numbered hit. So it's going to be this one. Okay, so he's going to lose, that's unit 10. He's going to lose his IP as well and come down and here. And the IP goes away. And then finally, uh, unit 15. Uh, Okay. Okay, and he can actually come right down here as well. But as I'm, I'm just putting it there because this would now surround the guy. So, um, that's preference A as a hex that would cause the Soviet unit to become surrounded. So this would be his priority. However, he would still be breaking the restriction because he's in. He would be in danger to surround himself. He moved there, so that doesn't count. It's going to be between these two. There's space for both. A uh, space in both. It doesn't matter that there's two in that one and only one in that one. Not that I'm redone. Uh, so it's going to come down to move, most movement again. So this is one, two, three. Whereas this is one, two, three, four. So I think he's going in there. He's going to lose his IP now. We're not opening anything up there. I don't think so. Right, and I'm just going to put him down the bottom and there. Okay. Right, and then obviously, like right, Unit 9, he's still not done anything. Now, he had to do it in the order that he had to do it, so that's why he couldn't move. You can't then go back to him and say, oh, well, wait a minute, I can now... You know, squeeze. Well, if he moves, if he moves, that then becomes surroundable. So, but he he can't do that. He's done his check and he can't move. Um, yeah, okay. Right. Well, I don't think we've opened anything up. I say we we opened the town up here. This garrison's in the way to stop any shenanigans surrounding any of these guys. So, and then the fact, I mean, obviously this guy couldn't move because that would have lit surround on that side as well. A little bit, um, yeah, okay. So we're gonna get our first, we're gonna get our first German attack. Oh, goody. Um, so, yeah. So we've now moved everything. Now, bear in mind, we still have an active unit. That, um, well, he's not gonna do anything on this attack card because he's got two straight. Um, actually. He can't. He's done a check already, hasn't he? He was part of the original check. But he's still a, he's an active unit that's not carried out an act... You know, he's not carried out an action yet. So we can still proceed through the action steps after this attack to see if he can do something. And then... Oh, wait a minute. Did that... Yeah, he's got an IP still. So he still does have an IP in that hex. So I'll put the wee blue cube back because not everybody moved out of the hex. So, right, so what's the attack card do, Gran? Uh, I know we're, <laughs> I'm gonna have to copy this across. Uh, I better, I better. I don't want things to go to port the now. Right, um, I'll just pause and I'll be back in a few minutes. Right, okay, that's that bit copied across, so space on my phone again. Um, okay, so we're gonna go into this combat. You'll see I've, uh, 
jumped ahead a little bit. And then we do have five to one. They've got five to one odds and seven chip pools. Um, yeah, 20 strength against our four. Now we have an IP. So remember that whole situational strength thing. That only counts while they are checking to see if they're going to come and attack. That wasn't anything to do with our strength. But we do have an IP still, obviously. So that does count for for something. So, and then you'll just notice the, the instructions on the German attack card there. It says, if greater than or equal to five steps are attacking, break off combat at A2, otherwise A1. So they do have that many steps attacking. So if they get to A2, they're going to stop drawing chats. And they, they're not restricted like how we are. They've got to draw the minimum. Now the minimum will be, will just be two um, for our two steps. Uh, fortunately we do have armor in this battle. So uh, the minimum will be two, but then after that, and I'll just check and go through the procedure since the first time they're doing it again. After that, they just keep drawing chits one at a time after that until they reach, um, I'm, Kind of assuming it was it's the same as what it was in our den, so we'll, we'll double check though. Um, but if they eventually reach A2 and the results, they'll then stop drawing chits. Now, if they don't reach that result, they'll draw, they'll keep drawing them individually until they reach seven or until they reach A2. And um, so that's what will happen, okay? So, well, in fact, let's let's just look at the procedure because we're kind of there. Uh, right, on that one, it's this one. So, and then with that card, you'll notice that on the, the forward attack card, we had uh, Panzer Battalion as an extra combat tactic there. But you'll see that on the, just the normal attack card that we're using now, there's no there's no combat tactic. They're still going to draw a combat tactic, but they don't get that additional... There's nothing additional, right, basically. So, right, German attack. It says German units attack Soviet... Units, I'm just looking at the player aid, so hopefully everyone will be fine. Determine target and attacking units, and move attacking units adjacent to target as directed by German action card. Right, so we have done that. Uh, step two is apply combat tactics called for by action card. Right, and I've just, that's what I just talked about. There's no combat tactics for the action card. Or Manstein command card. Well, no, we've not got that. And now we draw one German command card and apply its combat attack. Okay, so um, should we do this now? I was kind of hovering a little bit, just wondering if my daft question maybe wasn't daft, and uh, <laughs> there might have been some response to it, but I'm not, I'm not seeing anything yet. So I was kind of like maybe kind of hoping that uh, just in case just in case for some reason that they should well you know what they're going to they would they would still be in these hexes wouldn't they well i don't know it might have altered things i don't think so it may have altered where certain one certain these units are maybe but i think they'd all still be attacking yeah i'm, I'm pretty sure if there was some issue we would still have the same amount uh 20 was it 20 Two, four, seven, I want to say, 14, 17, 20, yeah, it's bang on, 20 against four. Um, okay, so let's draw their combat tactic then, and see if they're adding more to our misery. Um, okay, uh, combat engineers. Right, well, that's great. Um, okay, so that's probably going to remove our IP, so that is more misery. Um... We'll just check in German combat tactics, combat engineer, German attack, remove an IP marker from the defender if present. Great. So that has made it worse for us. Um, and then we can't play combat engineers, I think it works out, doesn't it? Remove an IP from the defender if present prior to resolving combat. If no IP is present, instead add two to the co attacker's combat strength. Well, yeah, I was going to say, well, I'd rather have had that, but it 
yeah, it's not a either or, it's like, if it's got an IP, it's off. If it's not got an IP, it would add two, so it, it could have, it's not, but it could have added, you know, to the the ratio of how they're doing. Right, so that was bad. Um, right, and not only that, that adds a combat chip as well. So, uh, yeah, it was eight, there's, they're all just, uh, none of them are three-step units, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It was seven chip pools, but now that's combat engineers. I'll just get rid of that card now, though, because it's done what it's done. Um, right, so now it's our opportunity. And we can only play one. So play one Soviet combat tactic at your option. Uh, not if all target units unsupplied, dispersed, or unsupported. Well, that's not the case. And then we start drawing chats. Well, I had a look earlier, and... There, there is a few options. I've got four possible cars as options, although I'm going to count this one out, NKVD, and that's because it doesn't allow me to retreat. <laughs> so it says, if defending, reduce Soviet hits by one, Soviet units may not retreat. And I don't feel that's that great. I, and it's not a hex... It's not a hex that I, I would say, well, I'm never going to retreat from that hex anyway. It, it looks like a hex where I'm, I'm quite happy to retreat from. Um, the next one was air power. Okay, they've not played air power, so that's... Po and it's on the 69th Army card. Not not a strong card. We do want to get them moving, but um, yeah, there is that. Um, the next one was on the 40th Army card, which I'd like to... I prefer to keep now that's intelligence and that's the one that lets you after all combat chips are drawn revealed in the combat remove one chip, chip of your choice before applying results you may also at your option replace the removed chip with another chip drawn from the cup the German intelligence tactic cancels Soviet intelligence so uh, yeah on defence I thought there might have been some difference to but it does allow you still the option of ok I'm not having that chip but you can draw another chat, you know? Um, and however, I've kept the best, well, I think my best option to last, and that's Reinforced Battle. It's on the Six Army card. Hmm. Oops. What happened there, Grant? Right, uh, it's on the Six Army card. Ah, oh, these were, okay. There was a bit of both in there, that's what I was. I just knocked them down. Um, so, yeah, maybe not. Maybe not that bad. So I was double-checking Reinforced Battle, though, because I know we've not done it on defence. I don't know, don't know if we've done it on attack yet or not. Maybe we did. So select one active or an active stack that did not move or attack in the current activation that could reach combat and a single move to participate in the combat. Now, bear in mind, if this guy's surrounded, we, we can't do any of this, so... But there is, we can come round here and into the hex, okay? And there's two units in the hex, so there's a sp there's space for one more, and there's only two steps in the hex, right? The selected units must be supplied, undispersed, in the same front as a unit in the combat, right? So um, that's fine. They're all from the southwest front, all these units round about. Um, and not, and this is one I sort of hesitated at, and not adjacent to an active enemy unit. And obviously this only applies on defence. And then I thought, well, these units, and then I thought, wait now, yeah, these units are still active. They've not finished their activation. They're still about to attack. So we can't, that's my understanding, I can't use units from there. Um, that's my understanding of it. So, and then it says a reinforcing attack, well, I'll not go into that because that's not what we're doing. A reinforcing defending unit stack moves into the hex with the defending units, a base stacking limits. When defending, the total strength of the reinforcing units can't exceed the strength of the defending units. So I can only add four strength, which is kind of fine because I was looking just at this guy here. Um, Oops, that's me zoomed out as far as I go. Right. Probably want to go in a bit. Um, I mean, there's this guy, but it means exposing that time. So that seems silly. Uh, he's three strength. Um, yeah, I could bring that armor unit up, but I thought, 
why not bring this I mean, okay, it's leaving this city with this one strength, admittedly. Um, well, what else is in this stack then? The two. Yeah, you'd be better bringing that first guards unit than Grant, wouldn't you? One, two, th oh, he can't reach. <laughs> Great. He can't reach, can he? One, two, three, four. So it's only this guy that could reach. Um, he's reduced, right, okay. Well, and then, like I say, I can't, going by how it's saying that, these are adjacent to active units, so I don't think I can pull one of them away. Um, but I could bring that in, right? So what would that do for me? Well, it would add two more steps, it would add four more strength. They would then have 20 against eight. That drops the odds from 5 to 1 to 2 to 1. That's pretty good. Now, <clears throat> now we can alter the chip pools. Well, it would alter the minimum chip pools. The minimum chip pools would then become 4. Um, so these are the things. I mean, okay, leaving this time with one strength in it, maybe not the best, but, well, most stuff around the bit, well, unless they do burst their way through here. <laughs> Um, I guess these are the things we're going to just, this is it, do you want to do it? I mean, is it an important battle? I feel like it could well be, yeah. I think I'm going to play this. Um, yeah. I think I'm starting to realise that things are going to start going this way. I mean, I did think there was quite a force gathering there. Maybe I should have thought more about it. Right, so I'm going to play this, and we're going to reinforce the battle. And we're going to move this first guard's four strength unit. Yeah, I mean, it's either him Oh, hold on then, because he could reach. Hmm. He could reach. The infantry can, but the... This guy could... What if we added just two? That would be 20 to 6. That would be 3 to 1. But it'd be, it'd, it'd, we would only have three single-step units in the hex. So, But then are we not going to retreat anyway? Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure that. I, I was about to start saying, right, go the, for, move the first cards unit in because... They're not quite as important. And then leaving that one strength, and we already used the first guards army card that would replace a point. We've used that already. We've used it for the tank brigade combat tactic, which was a complete failure. Um, and then this is the card we're using for the reinforced battle, which is the primary six army card. So should I maybe not just use this to join the battle because are we going to do anything with the sixth army? So I'm now starting to sway towards moving that and then it leaves these a bit stronger. So one, two, three, four, five. I don't want that unit to get hurt, but I'm hoping with the odds it might help us and we might not actually have to retreat. Um, cause yeah, I mean, if we do retreat, we're going to have to retreat in it less hex. Yeah, yeah, well, that's fine, I suppose. Right, I think I'm going to do this. Yeah, just just do it, Grant. So I'm going to reinforce battle and put that guy in. So that now bumps us up. So that card's done. And you can only play one combat tactic when uh, the Germans are attacking, remember, so... But that's fine, I wasn't going to play any more than one. So, um... Yeah, um... What does that do? That re reduces odds. Like I said, it was 20 to 4. It's now 20 to 8. So their odds drop significantly, down to 2 to 1. Uh, the chip pools are still 8, but the minimum chip pools are now 4 instead of 2. Okay. Oh, and I just had a reply, Tom Castle, um, 
actually starts off my, uh, regarding my question starts off by saying that he thinks that maybe the priority should be the other way about and it should be empty hex before before uh, what's the other one again a hex not adjacent to a German unit adjacent to the same Soviet unit that surprises it surprises me if it's because you would have thought they would have seen that and realised Although according to I think what Tom says he's he's always played it that way so I don't know he goes on to say it might not be I've not fully I just came in just there just now I just glanced at it so there is maybe some doubt as to uh, yeah should I maybe hold on before drawing shirts then. Uh, I think if it, like I say, the units would just be in different places, but I'm pretty sure we would have still had the same force. Mm. Right, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I do need to take a five minute break. So, and Mr. Butterfield was around earlier to answer my questions, so, of course, time zones and that can, uh, I don't know, yeah. Um. Okay, I'll just put us on pause just now and I'll be back shortly anyway. Okay, just going to go for this and uh, we'll see. Like I say, like I've kept saying, I think the same units will be involved in the attack. If they should be placed in a different way. But it is the way that it says in the rules, so... If it turns out to be some kind of mistake that they've now they've then found out about, then I'll just put it down to that. It won't be, won't be my mistake this time. <laughs> Uh, which is nice. Okay, um, where are we, where are we? Right. So I think we're drawing chits now, aren't we? So German attack, draw combat chits, then this is step four. Step five, calculate hits for both sides. Six, apply step losses and retreats and dispersal to target units. Seven, apply step losses and dispersal to attacking units. Eight, check attacking units for advance after combat. Okay. So, you know, I'll keep this open though, because this is different. So, yeah, drawing combat chips. Required minimum chip draw equals steps in defending units. Um, and then we know about the maximums. Uh, it says additional draws, German attack, draw chips one at a time until maximum is reached or German hits greater than the break-off number on the German action card. Well, we know the break-off is then, uh, because we have got five steps. It's A2, isn't it? Yeah. Right, okay. So, right, well, let's draw our minimum four. Where am I putting these, Grant? Well, I could probably make a gap in between here, couldn't I? Something like that. Right, so we'll get the shits in there. I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, I'll get the first four. Oh, look at that, that would have been a nice start if I put the air power eh? Hit to the Germans, a minus hit to us. What card was that on as well? It was only one of the 69th Army cards. Urgh. Okay, well they never played air power either, so... Right, nothing doing. Damn, I was just... They were the first three chats. This was City on... City are not supported on the other side. No artillery. There's the fourth of the chats. Which is Combat Engineers. They played Combat Engineers, didn't they? Yeah, and it only applies if it's the attacker. Uh, well, it's in the chip pools, isn't it? Applies if, yeah, it doesn't tell you in the play rate that one, does it? You've got to go look in. I'm pretty, I mean, I don't think I need to look here. Uh, well, we can look in the combat quickly. Combat engineers. Applies if the combat engineer's combat tactic has been applied by the attacker only, yeah. So that one does apply. So they've got, they've got, uh, oh, they break off at A2. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. Or I think, hang on, did they not? Yeah, I think I maybe skipped on by that bit, didn't I? Come back, shirts. Is it not just an employer aid card? Does it not tell you? No. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't read that, but so so they'll they'll break off at A two if they happen to take two hits themselves, or the hits against the Soviets are enough to eliminate all units. And then it references thirteen point four two, which will uh, yeah, which shows you know, if we know if we know they're gonna eliminate us then they're going to stop drawing chats, obviously, as, as you would do yourself. Now, that's the sun belting in the window. That's just going to be a pain, I think. Yeah. Uh, it still looks all right through the screen, though, so um, I can see. Uh, right, so now they draw individually until one of the break off. Either they break off at A2, or they have enough chits to, or they have enough hits to eliminate us all. Or uh, they reach eight chits. Okay, so we'll get them one at a time. Oh, I thought we were getting something there on them. It was three to one on the front. I thought, oh, maybe. But it's less than two to one. They've actually got two to one, haven't they? Yeah, we had eight strength. They had 20. So, yeah, it has two to one. Okay, so that's five, three to go. Oh, I'm not happy. I looked at this and I thought, well, seven to one. I mean, maybe. But then again, that's one of the ones that's... Up there, yeah. I should have been expecting it. Eh? Flank attack, so he gets that because they are flanking us. Um, and this is the whole thing about them wanting to be around. I mean, if they, you know, if we if we had only had, let's just say, right, that we had only brought these three units into the battle, that must be wrong, eh? Because if, if if these other units weren't active, if the only active units we had were the three, and that preference was saying, uh, don't move into a hex that's adjacent to the same, you know, a German unit that's adjacent to the same Soviet unit, then we would end up with three units in this hex attacking from one hex. This flank attack wouldn't have applied. I mean, I know we brought more units into the attack, but uh, like I say, if we only had three... Um, so that does seem a bit odd. Eh? Okay, so this isn't going well. We've got six chats already. We've got two more to come, so here we go. Oh, you're not going to believe this one. Look at that. How cruel is that? He's played the four command cards, so attack a command four or five, A minus one, and D two. This is devastating. Right, one more. Ch uh, well, yeah, they're not eliminating us. Did they need to eliminate everybody? I would imagine so, yeah. This is horrible. So, hits against Soviets are, en are enough to eliminate all units. Um, so, they would need. Because we've got one, two, three, four steps in. At the moment, we. Retreat, retreat, that soaks up two of the hits. We've still got two hits to take, yeah. Yeah. We're losing a unit here. Right, one more chat. Unless well, we can get a D minus one, I think. Right, here it is. I'm just gonna chuck it out there. Ooh. Oh, that's not what we want, is it? That is not what we want. That's another hit. And they and they've just cancelled out their, their hat. Anyway, that is probably the worst result we could have got from 2-1 to one odds. They got a combat engineer that they played. Okay, the flank attack. Attack a commando and they're playing a four card. And then to finish it off with a wee low odds like that. Just, just enough to be able to handle it. Oh, that's brutal. Okay, so... No hits to them. One, two, three, four, five hits to us. Oh dear. Yeah, I was just looking at it. They're not one. Well, that's not true. I'm saying a reinforced battle did nothing, but it probably did. They, they would have stopped drawing. Yeah, I think they, they wouldn't have drawn that last chat, would they? Because they would have been eliminating both my steps. I mean, at least we're not getting completely wiped out. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, um, so five hits to us, nothing to them. 
Uh, right, let's have a look then. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, it was probably as bad as it could have got there, wasn't it? Right, so we've got five hits to take, so we're going to retreat, and that's the only option we've got, because we can't go and... Uh, in an enemy zone of control. And we, we don't have the choice of this, by the way, even with us, I think it's, it's, um, but you, I wouldn't want to do that anyway. It makes, <laughs> makes no sense, does it? Right, so that soaks up one hat. We've got four more still to take. So now we do have some options and I think they are my choice, aren't they? Um, let me just get the rule book out for last, give me a sec. Yeah, page 33, more than one choice. This is 13.6 retreats. More than one choice is about halfway down. Within any of these priorities, retreat into any hex. However, retreat is allowed across an unbridged river, the Dnieper River hex side, only if no other hex is available in that priority. So that does apply to us as well. And then Soviet options are, if there is more than one choice available when retreating Soviet units, you choose. When retreating a Soviet unit into a hex with a garrison, remove the garrison and consider the hex unoccupied upon entry. Okay. Uh, so we do have a choice of where we're going here, but... I don't know. Does it, does it really matter? Well, we're still going to have two hits to take. So we're going to reduce that and we're going to lose a unit. Um, and the thing is, we're not going to be able to lose the 6th Army unit either. It's going to be one of the pop-off units. Or we wipe out two of the pop-off units. <laughs> Seems slightly worse. And we're going to be dispersed as well when we finish. Uh, yuck. Um, I don't really think there's any benefit to going here or here. Or here, is there? So I'm going to retreat to here. Which takes us down to three hits still remaining. Uh, is it? Have I counted that wrong? That's worse than I thought. Uh, was it D5? I put the chits, well they're the only chits in the cup, so rather than try and find the video footage again. Right, so we've got a combat engineer, that's one. That didn't count, that didn't count. Flank attack was one. Uh, one and a half to one was one, and then uh, attack of command, yeah, one, two, three, four, yeah, it was five. Oh dear. Right, so D5, so it was retru retreat, retreat, um, for two of the hits. Yeah, we do indeed still have three hits to take. That's even worse. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. This is brutal, isn't it? But I don't have a choice. Um, I'm losing both the pop-off units. My, my. So my first hit I take on this guy, and then I can't take another hit on that guy until I've um, assigned a hit to everybody. So second hit goes on that guy, he's dead. Second, third hit goes on that guy, he's dead. Uh, sorry, the third hit. So that's our one, two, three hits. <sighs> that was just like devastating. And we're dispersed. <laughs> and now two, two units. And then one minute units box. Did we not? We we used a replacement point, or did we? No, we've not had a pop of. Have we had a pop of card this turn even? Yeah, we did. We got the primary card, yeah. I want to start thinking though that we had maybe the, the supplemental card last turn. 
I might have that wrong. Okay, right, so now they're going to look at the possibility of advance after combat. Um, is it on the combat? Is it on the player aid? German advance after combat. So we're, we're checking in um, ascending order. So we know that Unit 3 was the lowest numbered, wasn't it? Because he's the one that kicked things off. Um, so the root of advance, this is where the combat occurred and we obviously went retreat, retreat. So this is the path of retreat. Um, so for each eligible unit, roll, die and consult table below. If die result falls in range, unit advances, right. The root of advance, advancing units already in the hex, there's none. So, and then it, the root of advance is into first hex, first that applies. One is a VP hex, no. Two is a hex enabling supply, no. Three is a hex causing surround, no. Four is a, a forward direction. And all the options we give an automatic advance, is it a forward direction, no. It's going that way, the forward direction. So, adjacent to a forward direction, well, yes, it is, because there's a the forward direction, that is adjacent to it. So, on a roll of 1 to 7, um, on a roll of 1 to 7, that, that unit 3 will advance. I'm just going to do these off camera. Makes it easier. Uh, we've got a 4, so... So, yes, yeah, so he will advance. Now we also need to check for two hex advance. Uh, if you if you're not advancing, um, my mechanism is allowed. If they're eliminated or two hex retreat, yeah, okay. So if you're not advancing, a second hex has a choice of hex. He's checked the hex with the highest chance of advance. So he's in here and he can advance the second hex. Um. So this would be an auto advance because it's a forward arrow, I think. Because the options are VP hex, hex enabling supply, hex causing surround. Ooh. Uh, not quite. However, that's that's a forward arrow as well, isn't it? It's not quite surrounding on, but uh, is it? No, he's got an out here. Right. Um. So, and then forward direction, and because there's no units already advanced into there, that's an automatic advance into there. So, that's him done his thing. Now, we look at unit four. Again, he's got to roll a one to seven to get in there. Oh, hang on. Yeah, no, it's the same hex, isn't it? So, one to seven. He's rolled a ten. Okay. Um, so, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, okay, that was a 10. Yeah, what am I thinking about? Right, okay. Um, so that was unit 4 done its attempt. So unit five's next. Again, he would advance on a 1 to 7. That's a 3. So he does advance into there. Now, check for his second advance. Again, he checks... Well, hang on. If, if there's a choice of hexes, he checks the hex with the highest advance chance. Uh, hang on. So, this is a forward arrow, but there's a unit already in there. So, that would be a row of 1 to 6. Um, and these other advances would be other routes. So they would not. Oh, hang on, hang on. Hang on, this adjacent to forward direction. So that would be there. So in actual fact, that's a 1 to 7, isn't it? Yeah. Because there's a unit already, and I know this guy advanced from there to there, but that's because it was an auto advance. 
because there's no unit in there, the, the chances of them moving into there is a one to six, and the chances of them moving into adjacent to forward direction with nobody in it is a one to seven. So he's going to take that one on, the one to seven. And he's rolled an eight. <laughs> okay, so he's then put, so that's three, four, five, uh, six. Right now, that is the forward direction. Oops. But that is the forward direction. So that is, but there's a unit already in there, so he's going to advance on a 1 to 6. He does roll a 6. Um, so he's in there with a the possibility of a second hex advance. Um, well, again, he's going to try this one, because that a, that's a 1 to 7 for the second advance. They are all mechanised units, yeah? Forgetting the infantry wouldn't be allowed to do this. Yes, they are. Right, so he's going to try and a 1 to 7 into there. Uh, we've got a 4 this time, so he will, he will advance into here. I just hope I'm not going to like, go back to my computer and find, <laughs> find out that all these units should be in different positions because <laughs> there's some issue. Uh, okay, so, and then in here we have unit 10, unit 10, unit 15. These are all infantry? No, not the one down the bottom. So, and that is not adjacent to the forward arrow, so it looks like they're going to stay there. Uh, BV hex, hex enabling supply, hex causing surround, no. Forward direction, no. And it's not adjacent to the forward direction, that. That would be, that would be adjacent, or that would be adjacent, but not that okay so it's another route so it means none of the guys will advance okay uh ha right and but just before we just step away from that there are some restrictions and i forgot about that um so unit and hex right german advance restrictions unit and hex in german supply won't advance into hex not in german supply they're all going to still be in supply, okay? Your unit will advance into surrounded hex, only a VP hex, or to cause Soviet unit to become surrounded, or from turn five, if hex is not in Soviet support. Um, I don't think any of them are surrounded hexes, though, are they? No. I mean, they're in danger of surround, quite probably, yeah. Um... But it does say unit will advance into surrounded hex only if, right? Unit won't advance if doing so causes Soviet proximity to empty garrison town city. Well, that's a point. That's a point. Let's move these cards out of the way just now. Because we left that. I think it's too far away, though. Well, actually, there's still not a gap. So it's fine. Just that... Uh, you know, if one of them had advanced sort of sideways and allowed, allowed a gap straight to this, it would, uh, sorry, the town up there, then it would, uh, that would be no restriction. Uh, so that proximity to empty garrison town city hex. Uh, mechanised unit won't advance into a marsh hex. Okay. Well, well, it didn't look like they did break their restrictions. So, um, yeah, that's good. Right, we need to, we need to keep this going or this will be a, like, this whole part will be, be splitting up into three bits, never mind two. Okay, well, we've still got one active unit left, right? Uh, with this guy, and he's got a two strength, and he's not going to try and use the attack, right? So we can skip by that now. But however, he still does want to then look at the next action step, which was so long ago, wasn't it? That was action step four, I want to say. So, action step five is move to a hex and remove dangerous surround from a German unit in hex and Soviet support. Move to a hex and remove dangerous surround from a German unit. Uh, yeah, because I did just say that some of these units now might be in dangerous surround, possibly. Because um, remember, we do consider dispersed units. I mean, pretty sure this guy's in dangerous around. Um, I don't want to 
honest, is it not maybe more than one? We can get something into there. We can get something into there. And we can get, um, actually, yeah, I can't, no, I can't get up into there, no. So I can get something into there, there, and, you know, there, shall we say. Uh, so he's in dangerous around. He is not. Now, this is a fully stacked hex. Um, well, yeah, no, that's fine, because he can move, he can move back, yeah, so he's got an out. Um, so he's in dangerous round. Uh, well, if he's not, then he mustn't be either, because he can go out that way as well. And then he's not. So it's just this guy, I think. Um, so can that guy move to help him out? I don't think so. I think he's too far away, isn't he? If he'd been a mech unit, maybe. Move to exit, remove dangerous round from German unit in hex and Soviet support. Um, no, he can't. He can't really. One, two. Well, hang on. No, maybe. Four. I mean, he can actually go one. No, he can't. He's on a control there, Grant. He could, he could move to this hex. So then we couldn't move to that hex. We could move to that hex. Does that get him out of dangerous round? No, it does not. Don't think. Right, I don't think he can do it. <laughs> I don't, I'm not 100% sure though, I feel like I'm coming to my end of my strong thinking here. <laughs> um, okay, six is move proximate, move proximate to empty Soviet VP hex, if not already proximate. Move proximate to empty Soviet VP hex, well, there is this one here, but one, Two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. No, he's just one short though. Ah, no, he's too short. That's talking about getting in the hex, isn't it? Yeah. So no, he's not able to do that. Um, move to hex that causes surround of Soviet unit. Well, there we go. There we go. Bingo. We've got yeah. Right, so, well, it's not that hex. He, he, one, one, two, three. Yeah, so he can reach two possible hexes that are going to surround this stack of units. Um, okay, and there's preferences. Move to hex that causes surround of Soviet unit. Prefer A, adjacent to surrounded unit. They both are. Lowest hex number. So that would be that one. Makes sense. He's going to come down and around. However, stop. He's going to be in dangerous around himself. And they are, anyway. So stop. Stop. Yeah, if he moves into here, he's in dangerous around. So again, it's in Soviet support. So again, he doesn't want to do that. So is the other one a positive? So this is not an option. Is the other one okay, or is that in surround as well? One, two, yeah, no, it's going through the woods there. Uh, what can come down here? Ooh, just the six army. One, two, three, four. The fortieth army. Three, four, five, six. Um. What? Five, six. The 40th Army could get down to there. He's still got an out. Yeah, he's not in dangerous around there. Okay, I'm just going to speed on with this because I need to... Yeah, I need to get moving. Right, so he's not in dangerous around. He's also not enabling anything to be proximate to that. And he's surrounding this unit. 
Or stacky units even. Nasty stuff. Well, that was horrible. <laughs> um, that's all the active German units that were involved. Uh, had a show. They've all carried out an activation of some sorts. Um, we will return them to the right facing. And um, yeah, how about that? Like I say, that was ghastly, wasn't it? Lost two mechanized units. One other one reduced. Got my stack of uh, six army units in uh, dangerous surround. Well, sorry, and surrounded. And this one's obviously dispersed, just waiting to be picked off, really. Yeah. Well, just shows you, I, I mean, I suppose I wasn't sure. I, I felt like something bad was going to happen with him, but there you go. When they're, they're that close together and they can just gang up like that. Nasty, nasty stuff. Right, but it was good though. So, um, yeah. Okay, well that just lets me know how things can uh, how things can go. Uh, sitting and feeling comfortable on my twenty three victory points and. <laughs> making, make it's all making attacks and uh, yeah, look at that devastation down there. So uh, it it tells me that we do need to yeah just shore things up and uh, get defensive. I think. Right. Okay. I'll get away for now and hopefully this is just one part. Of things <laughs> I can't remember the what the other part was, how long it was because this is forty seven minutes. Okay. We'll get away now then, Grant. Right. Uh, I'll be back with the next part. Surely, guys. Okay, cheers.